went thrift shopping too when yesterday. I go to the thing every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I found a Versace suit for 30 bucks. 30 million. What are you doing tomorrow? Um, I'm going to Six Flags. No, no. After, I'm sorry, I'm in this week. Oh, this week? Um, just doing my portfolio of stuff. How's that going? Are you doing the website? Oh, I'm so excited about my website. I'm having a lot of fun with it, which is like maybe too much fun. But like, I have no. nothing else to do. Are we still down for the photo shoot on Saturday? Yes. I, I fully, like, I'm... Oh my God, I've been yes. thinking about... Wait, yeah, I need to do that, the, the oversized thing. So can we go to a thrift store before? And like yeah. get me a pair of oversized jeans so I can do like what you were, what you yeah, did yeah. to your jeans? Do you wanna... I, I literally, I, I, I'm like, I, like, I'm down all Saturday to do it. Yeah, I'm down. Like this morning, wake up, have breakfast, and then go. <laughs> I'm free. I wanna have because. fun. We could like um, take pics in the studio space. Have I taken you to my favorite thrift shop? Pardon? To my favorite thrift shop? Yeah, let's do that. What is it called? Other people's clothes. Is that one? That one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Have you been? No, I've never, but you told me about it this whole oh. time, and I'm like so excited about it. Other people's clothes. It's amazing. Um, I think it's close to your to your studio. Yeah, yeah, it is. So let's let's okay, let's meet there like in the morning. Yeah. Saturday, like around. Tell me. Yeah. I'll be down. up early. You can do some really fun stuff. No, like I have ideas. For also, them. like, I went to this junk store. I forgot where it is exactly, but I have the name. But, like, they sell old, like, typewriters from, like, the 70s. Okay. So it's, like, right after they look antique but right before the internet age. So they look kind of like keyboards from the 80s. Where is this? I don't remember where, but I had, I saved it in my maps. Um, but we should go there and like buy some props that we could use for, like, props? for fun. I mean, I feel like in this, are you shooting or Lauren, Lauren's coming? Pardon? Laura, is Lauren coming? We can just shoot, but I can also ask Lauren. I think okay, she'll be really like done. Do we have like a clicker to the camera or like self-timer? We, we could use my handy cam. Like my Sony handy cam. Can we do that? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like it, it, I, I want to get of us I oh, you want to get a you. professional one, like a high quality one, or do you want like a low res one? I was thinking like low res and high quality. I feel like we can bang our bimbo photo shoot. Oh. In the meantime, as we shoot your thing. We can do it. Shoot, like, let's just it. shoot a lot of things. Yeah. Like, I'm saying, it. I can do it all day and we can shoot our content, your content. I'm so random down. Random ass content. Yeah, just get lunch, that's like stupid And then shit. just try yeah. shit. I'll bring a suitcase full of clothes and we can just like... Yeah, I'm so down to do stupid shit with you. Oh, can comes? you please bring your green bodysuit so I can green screen on you? It's a shirt now. I uh, cut it. Well, we could, do, we could still do some fun stuff with that. I could put King Trident's chest on your... No, Aladdin. Aladdin's chest. With the vest? Yes, Aladdin with a little... Pro <laughs> and I bought the pants. They were these amazing The harem pants? pants? Oh yeah, the big pants. Oh wow. And I loved it. Nice. And then, oh I gotta, oh I gotta show you my How version. much shopping did you do this week? Cause I feel I like you went to that, you went to a store, you bought a bunch of shit, and then we went thrift shopping too when yesterday. I go to the thing every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're asking. Where do you put your clothes? I don't buy thing. I don't buy every day, but I go, like I go look at like, but Especially. most of your stuff is in storage right now, right? Because you're like subletting? No, it with me. Oh! It with me. Also, yeah, I also, I've noticed that like, depending on what area you're at, the clothes change. The brands change. Yeah, so like when totally. I was in Chelsea, a lot of 
people were just like throwing out like brands because there was that. I'm looking, now that I'm living, living in Upper East Side, like I want to see the, like, the thrift shops and like, I feel like I found a Versace suit for 30 bucks. Like I'm trying oh my to, god. Yeah. In, up there, in Upper East? Yeah. Is it real Versace? Yeah. It's just people that are just like, they're, they're just like, we just got okay, rid of it yeah, and they just go crazy. to like, they, they go to the nearest Goodwill, the nearest thrift shop, and they're like, here, buy it. Is this it. where you got the Calvin Klein blazer from? Yes. No way. No, 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 no. Oh. Wait, no. This one I got it from Chelsea. It's oh, too, this is Chelsea. so gorgeous. I have the whole tux. I love like an oversized blazer. You know, in my oversized era right now. Yeah, same. I love it when it like goes off my shoulder a little bit. Well, actually, how did you, how did you get into fashion? What's your fashion background? I don't really remember, but because you are to me the most like, to me, I think you're my top three fashion inspirations. Wow, that's I a huge you know. compliment. Personally, you know, you. yeah. Thank you. I don't know. I just. Oh, it definitely, definitely. I had this conversation with like. You fuck it up in the fashion world. I don't know. Um, I had this conversation. For the, the Disney photo, for you. Keep going. What is this? Oh, your Instagram. I, I, um, I don't know. I've, I had this conversation with my friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, Aladdin. <laughs> okay. I've been every verse of it. I'm telling you, since a kid, I was obsessed with Aladdin. I my two cousins. <laughs> So that, your side? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was incredible to see. I don't know why I got into fashion. I think it's like, I think in my entire life I kind of, and this is kind of like, again, that tying back to that conversation that we had earlier about like assimilating to another culture, holding mirrors up for other people to kind of like blend in. It's this kind of like idea that the world is like a stage for me and I, and I am an, you know, and I'm just performing in it. And um, I think, you know, I think fashion is a way for me to step into all the different characters that I want to step into. So I like sometimes like oversized blazers and suit sets because I can step into this character. And sometimes I want to just wear lingerie um, and parachute pants. Yeah. Um, and a cowboy boots in one day and like see who that person is like it, for me it's like I'm pushing myself a bit to the edge to understand who I am more so fashion for me it's a bit more of like a soul searching thing day by day so I go wild I, every day I, I, I try to be kind of like a different character I don't know how about you well I think I, I follow up to that question it's like I remember when, when one time one time we had we were, we were talking about something and then I think I mentioned like, oh, like I, I like to push myself, and one of my ways of my ways of pushing myself is like I never I never wore a skirt okay. before, yeah. and then you were like, oh, if if you go to an Indonesian wedding, like you it's wear a like cultural sarong, yeah. thing to wear. And to oh me, I was God. like, oh, Matic. like it's it's like in Scotland it's too. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But I was like, it's interesting how like in some cultures like. In Mexican culture, definitely a skirt would not. Yeah, like why do you need to have this thing under your crotch oh. as men? Like why is that a masculine oh, the thing? The machismo, the masculine, the... But why is that a masculine thing? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I, I don't get it. Where, but where I, that's why when you said that, I was like... Well, I don't know wearing a skirt. I, I I generally don't, I never wear shorts out of my legs. I would never oh, wear. Yeah, I, 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 it's not. It's not a culture thing. I just don't wear yeah, shorts. Yeah. I like. I, <coughs> I don't do that. But I was like, it's interesting how. Yeah. It's tricky though because I think fashion. There's a lot of history behind it. A lot of history behind trends. A lot of history behind certain things. Um, and the more you kind of like research into it, the the more interesting. 
And I think it's kind of, it, it also ties into this idea of like appropriation, right? Sometimes like people want to experiment and express with fashion, but not in the way that it was intended to be. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like how the Cheongsam or like the Chinese Mandarin color, as they call it, has been so sexualized sometimes because it's deemed as like exotic and like, you know, those people who like think that they need to read up about Orientalism, but like, it's, it's just interesting that there is some weight to certain pieces in fashion. Like it is in music, like it is in art, like you need to under, sometimes like there's a cultural implication and understanding of like yeah. what you're wearing. 100%. Because you can't, you can't just try to express what was someone's hardship in your fashion. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think there needs to be a sense of self-awareness when you're trying to be experimental yeah. with clothes. Um, and, and you know, it was so funny. I, I bought you one of these. Yeah. So this, I bought you one of these, and I wanted to give it to you. But I, I legit, I was like, is it time to give it to you? So I was like, is Mel comfortable wearing a mariachi, like authentic mariachi yeah. bow, and feel like she's not? Right. I think for me, it's like. And whenever it's kind of like a cultural piece for someone, from someone, right? It's like, I need to understand like, the context of where I'm wearing it. Like, you know, if I invited you to an, an Indonesian wedding, like my Indonesian wedding, and I'd want you to wear like the traditional pieces, but I wouldn't know how I feel if you wore these traditional pieces in another situation, right? Like in another setting. So like, I don't want to be a caricature of what your culture is. Same. Um, so. It's like, yeah, I don't know, that's kind of like how I go through things. So a lot of like my fashion sometimes it's like a mix of like what I perceive as like sometimes traditional Indonesian and like, I don't know, kind of like this weird like 80s New York financial district culture of blazers and like what, like all these things that you wear to like offices like I love the aesthetic of that ironically like so I kind of like try and incorporate a lot of that into my work of like I'm wearing loafers and like sometimes I go to work in like a full-on suit um, because just because <laughs> I see it in the movies and I kind of want to do it again no, as, like, I mean, also like the, the, the the history behind a suit yeah. and a, a, a woman wearing a suit. Yeah. That's my winter uniform. Like I have like... And you don't have to always go like totally. background of white, uh, white woman, but like ethnicity wearing yeah. a suit in the male... Yeah, suits are so interesting. Like I think like it's such a easy thing for people to wear because it's just like it's so accepted everywhere, I guess. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's a more modern thing, that's why, but... I don't know, actually. Even even the fit of a suit. Yeah. Like, but I like an oversized fit. Like I love thing. it. I like being out of place in my suit. That's what I mean. Yeah, like in this, like yes, I feel like. That's what I mean. Like I feel like uh, for a long time. That's why I love now, and I and I before I didn't shop in the women's section, oh. women's section of a store, because before they would always do this to every every yeah. every shirt, every suit, everything. They were always like. Stint, like snitch it in the waist yeah. and now they now brands are getting baggier and like they're just like straight so yeah. like if, and they have their quality and more options mm -hmm. in the women's section because they have yeah. I guess they're trying to they know that maybe women shop more whatever studies they've done but the women's section in every store is better quality better fabric Better everything. The men's really? section in every store right now is basic as fuck. Sara and all those, I don't, I don't shop with Sara anymore, but like all those, but I go and like just like review on what y'all are doing. Every section of the store is so boring in the men's section as fuck. And the, in the women's section, there's like colors and there's yeah. textiles and there's fabrics and there's options, and they're all like now they're and they're not they're not this anymore. Nothing wrong. Oh, nothing wrong. If you want to be this, do that. But like they're just like <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. And I find that fascinating. Yeah. Like I'm like. And you know, with even all of that options, I still love buying like 
oversized suits. Like I yeah. think I love I love comfortable stuff. I love well I love like yeah. taking my dad's old suits that he doesn't wear to work anymore and just like tailoring it so it like the pants fit me and it doesn't like fall off when I walk. But like right. I keep the top part most of the time like baggy. But yeah. I think like one of my favorite like things I've seen is David Byrne, like from Talking Heads. I think he wore this like super like exaggerated oversized suit and like I don't know what it is but I found that so interesting and I think like that kind of like influenced how I like have seen suits because traditionally like you would want to have them fitted to you or like tailored to you. I think that's also kind of like uh, a symbol of wealth in a way and why not make it back? Well, question to you now. I have a question. Dina, you have you introduced me to your friends, kind of some of them, and I don't know Mari's or Patricia's, uh, Maori or Patricia's oh, yeah. like everyday attire, yeah. and it was different. Dina, yours are to me is in the best way scenario all over the place. Yeah. That's how I like to describe it. Like it's like there's no one like specific like yeah. they stick to that. Like for example, like Maggie, Edgar, Anna, like they're very in their own category. Yeah. But to me, you, Dina, are the ones that like explore so many fucking shapes, sizes. Yeah, and we like textiles. to share show clothes too, because like but, we love being experimental with that shit. Would you say like? How would you say your mom describes your fashion? Your parents, like, do they know what like you wear every day? I my parents think that what I wear usually is non-traditional. Really? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like, sometimes, like, even in Indonesia, like, I have to think a bit more about what I dress to please others. But when you're home? When I'm home, but when I'm here, I'm like, no, 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 what, no, what, what would your parents say about your fashion style? In New York. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like oh. non-traditional. Oh no! Oh, it's tra yeah, I, I heard yeah, traditional. Yeah. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, non non-traditional. Oh, non. Oh yeah, I, I just okay, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know. I like wearing suits for fun. Same here. Where where like sometimes like suits is like an office thing or an event thing, but I like I'd wear it out to go to a bodega. <laughs> like I I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> But um, I don't know, I like mixing a bunch of things. Um, and sometimes they don't look great, but then I know, and then like when they don't look good, I'm like, okay, I know they don't look good. Let me cut you over there. They always look great. Uh, uh, sometimes I, I wear things. No, 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 no. I don't agree. They look great. I mean, maybe, but like there are some things where I'm like, okay, this is not for me, you know, like there's some things where I try it and I'm like, oh, like I don't fuck with it. Like, and I think. What I mean by like, I don't look great is like, oh, I don't feel good in this outfit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, everything I'm I've seen you in, you look great. Thank you. But um, yeah, I kind of just like try it out and see if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Um, I kind of wish I had that approach more into life where I am not afraid to push my boundaries in certain things. If I was experimental in my life as I was in how I like dress day to day, and like maybe that could like make a complete difference. Well, how did you grow up with like, I, 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 clothes-wise? Like, I grew up in my family. Like, I couldn't go. I couldn't go to breakfast if I wasn't dressed up. Oh, interesting. Like PJs and like slacks. Like, I grew up not doing that. Like, I couldn't like just wake up and like in your PJs and go to like a breakfast. Like, you I grew up dress like up. shower change. And then go downstairs for breakfast. Oh, no. So to me, this is comfortable. Like, yeah, like to dressing me, up. dressing up is com like is comfort okay. to me. So you've always put an extra effort before any kind of even like any casual. To me, just normal. Yeah, yeah, to people, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. you're being extra. I'm like I'm. Yeah, for me, I I mean, when I'm home, I'm like I don't mind being in my rags, but I think my mom's always been like a very fashionable person. Like she was an old. Oh, one of the I early. follow your mom. Oh, yeah. He's a, I oh, my dad, where my dad excels in music, so my I mom can't. excels in the visual, like, fashion and arts, and um, she's very crafty, she's kind of like you, actually. She'd find, like, a vest that she'd like, but then she'd do some, like, embroidery on it, and, like, like and it looks super sick. Like, she'd spice it up, I, like, I'm like, 
I'm inspired by that. I changed, I bought this blazer and I changed the buttons. <laughs> oh my god, you're crazy. Wait, you know, which you know one, I'm going, you know I'm going to this. Dog? Where what? You bought the, the dog charm it's, it's, I'm putting it into another show that I already know what I'm putting in. But yeah, they're like, just like. <laughs> How iconic. I, I'm in my button area. I'm You're in your button, baggy and your button my area. My button area. I'm like, I like to change buttons. Alright. Like a, like a, like a, like a button psycho. Um, I need to, I need to do some more DIY things with you more. DIY is good. For me, working on, on a screen and seeing a screen every day, I need a no screen, like, way to express. Or just to like, yeah. And don't, I mean, don't look close because <laughs> I don't know how to sew. Like it's, Wait, no, it's pretty sturdy. No, no, like it's shitty as, like, it'll, it'll fall tomorrow, yeah. maybe, well, I, mean, let's, I don't know. Let, let's, let's learn, let's, let's, <laughs> let's learn how to sew. Yeah, it'll fall yeah, yeah. Under this, I have nothing, right? No, no I'm kidding, like well, I'm gonna have you something. Look like, no, like, you look like a model of set. Like, when they're, like, not, when they're working between shoots, yeah. And they go inside and have a cigarette, like, that's what you Oh wow, huge compliment. But yeah, I, would, I think, and we talked about this yesterday, and I, and I, I think it's... What, sorry? We talked about this yesterday, oh. about like, go, spirits, and, and I think culturally, in Mexico, we're not necessarily afraid of the death. Like, Dia de los Muertos is more of a celebration, right. in general, like, it's not a, like, when someone passed away, or be a, whatever the case may be, murder or anything, like, the way we celebrate death, we have a whole day for Dia de los Muertos. Yes. We, it's, it's, it's a positive thing. It's like acknowledging the ones that passed away. So I never, that's why I've never been afraid of like, I believe in spirits and I believe yeah. they're here, but I've never been afraid of them. That's, that's, that's like in Bali too, I think. Well, I'm not Balinese, so I can't really speak. I'm Javanese, but, well, Indonesia has so many different like cultures that like either celebrate death or have their own kind of like funeral ritual. But in Bali, it's like a, whole festival like when there's a funeral it's like somebody stops the streets and it's like a lot of gold a lot of dancing and like I celebrate Halloween when I went to the US but I but I respect Dia los Muertos more because it's an actual homage to the family members that have passed away and like all that world why why do you think death is not more celebrated like that around the world I mean it's very it's just scary. I mean, especially today after like everything, like, and I think death in general is a very a lot of people fear it, and it's, it comes trauma. I think. I guess, but yeah. I mean, I feel like I don't know. It's just like so interesting in different cultures, like celebrate people celebrating the afterlife. But I don't see it a lot here. Um, in a sense, maybe like going to like graveyards and like paying a tribute to those. And I'm also done with like, I'm, I, 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 that's the yeah. thing, like, we don't do those things in Mexico. So when I come to the US really? and, and we do like okay. corn maces, I'm like, yo, white people, like, I'm down for that. But like, we don't do corn maces in Mexico. Like, what's that? I go to church every Sunday. You go to church? You go to church every yeah, Sunday. Sunday, every oh, Sunday. I didn't know that. I don't care. I don't tell people. Whoa, yeah, wait, which I, church? I, like well, I used to go to the one in Fida, it was okay. next to my building. I, I would go to church, and that's why I love Fida, because I had my little community of, like, of church, and we would go to church, sit there for an hour, and then get lunch afterwards, right. just a bunch of us, and then go, whatever, do everything. I go to church just to like sit there and just, I might not pray, I might just be talking, I might be thinking about what am I going to do, but like I'm just sitting there Whoa. for an hour, quiet, thank you, I'm, I love to have that, I'm like, I'm like, what up, God? Like, also the way no the way idea. I talk to God is like a friend. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm not like, hey, sir. What? Is, like, I'm like, hey, what up? Sir? You don't fear God. I respect. Okay. I grew up Muslim, um, and then the term of like the praying thing. I I used to pray with my parents when I lived with them. Like, so I, there's a bit of like a scoring system in Islam. Like, it's called a pahala. Like, at least like what I'm raised with. Like. If you pray by yourself, you, you get good points in the eyes of God, but if you pray with other people, you get even more better points in the afterlife that like, you know, when they score you in Judgment Day. Yeah. I might be butchering the tale, but 
for this Korean judgment day go to heaven, you know. So I pray with my family a lot. Um, growing up, um, we I had one of those teachers, right, that like teach me how to read Arabic. And like we've had multiple teachers because the first one I remember told me that if you're not a Muslim, you're going to hell. Um, but that for me was like when I was a kid, it was a red flag. Like, why? Why is this what God would want if He's merciful or not? You know. But again, that depends on your teacher. And at this point in my life, like I kept on thinking that God was the same for everyone. Um, so I think at that crucial point in my life, I just stopped associating like my identity and my like with like religion or whatever. And so like I. I stopped praying and then like whenever I would pray by myself, I'll just like mess up the prayer mat so it looked like I used it. Um, and then coming to this country, I tried to assimilate so hard. I tried to forget who I was growing up, what it meant to be Indonesian, what it meant to be a Muslim girl. Like, I tried forgetting about it, especially there, there was this whole like, I think, I mean, yeah, obviously, I mean, there's this whole stigma against kind of like Islam as religion or a religion in general, but especially Islam in the U.S. So I was trying to fit in like a new kid, like I was in college trying to understand. So I like mirrored everyone around me trying to like figure it out. Um, but I think like in retrospect, like from where I am now, like I, I think I needed a God. <laughs> I think I needed kind of like this idea of like you someone. Yeah, well, here we are. I kind of like needed this idea of like, of like a God to kind of like kept me grounded because all of this assimilating, all of this mirroring that I've done to people felt very heavy. And after a while, like I had no idea who I was. I kind of like spiraled. And I didn't know how important that was until I left Indonesia. Isn't it, like I never, you never really know yourself or like what you are un until you're taken away from it, right? You never know how valuable someone is in your life until they're being taken away. There's this weird duality in me where it's like I need to like express all the different like alter egos that I have, and like the most dominant one, like my Indonesian alter ego is so dominant, and I like okay, I need like my Indo girls night, like I need to eat like this specific food, like from this specific like restaurant that we got delivered from Queens because they have a really good Indonesian community there and yeah. they make good Indonesian food and like watch an Indonesian movie and like have that sense of humor too that's different from like what's here. I think here. as simple as just speaking the language. As simple as speaking language. I think it's just like not being in, not speaking in English. Okay. Like me speaking Spanish to my friends and not having to translate yeah. to my non-Spanish speaker friends. Right. Yeah, but those things, it's like... Yeah. Or like, you don't have to explain it to it's, people. It's like an inside joke, almost. I love yes. having inside jokes. Yes. Do you have an artist that you like absolutely love or like whose music speaks to your soul? Not a specific artist, no. I have like songs that make me feel good. Music is more of a physical thing for oh, you? Oh, very. Do you like, find... Okay, interesting. Even for an example of that, like... Even when there's songs that are playing, I don't necessarily hear every word, lyric. I don't care. Right, okay. I know, like, uh, that's the fair. <laughs> Andre Andrea, the, the song Andrea from Bad Bunny. Yeah. I was dancing to it. I was like, woo! And I told Andrea, our friend. Yes. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, like Andrea, the song, I, sh I threw ass, and she was like, do you know what it says? And I was like, <laughs> honestly, I don't know. I, can, I can't tell you one lyric of it, but I like the sound of it, like the way of love. And she was like, it's about a girl getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> the way that I was like, because it started playing, I was like, ooh, it's my motherfucking sound. That's it feels like why? Like it goes about, back to that conversation rather about funerals and how they're being celebrated in certain cultures. Oh, in mine is it may be a fucking party. You know what I'm saying? They just remind me of that part I'll of our. Tell you right now, in mine is a party. Like if you go to, if I die, or whatever it may be, like I want everyone to dress up, yeah. not in black. If you like black, whatever. Wear gowns. Wear your gown. Wear things. I'm telling you right now, it's like it's if a it party. Happens, I want you. Be, I, want, I want you playing Bad Bunny. I want you playing Rosalia. I want you playing like like mariachi. I want a mariachi band standing on top of my dirt. I want that funeral to be a rave. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want disco balls. Sure, morning your own way, and also more like morning if you want more. But like. Right. That's what I was gonna like, ask. Like, if I if I pass away tomorrow, would you be able to dance? Celebrate. I think if if you told me if if you if you told me to tell me I want you to join my party, I would be sad as fuck. But I would be like crying, dancing. I'll be like, you wanted me to do this, so I'll do it. I, I, and it goes back to the thing culture, like, it's about celebration. Death can also be a celebration of someone's life, it doesn't have to be the ending of it. 